You are one of a number of world leaders, uh, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Angela Merkel, the President of Taiwan, and you all have been credited with a, really managing this crisis very effectively. Um, it happens to be that you are all women. Is that a coincidence? <laughs> well, I don't think uh, it is a coincidence, uh, but we have also examples of male leaders managing the epidemic quite uh, efficiently. I think what we are seeing here and what we can learn from this is that it's important to put your ego as a politician aside and and learn really from those humble scientists that have been really faced with this crisis that nobody really could expect. Be ready to see, say, admit that we are all really learning by doing and probably we will make mistakes. And I think that has been maybe the biggest issue of leadership and maybe that comes easier to women than men. I know before you became prime minister, you were an environmental activist and it has been extraordinary to see the transformation of the environment during this period of time, whether you're talking about fish swimming in the Venice canals or uh, the air clearing in some of India's most polluted cities. Do you think that people will be inspired by this and that there will be a, a shift in the conversation about climate change in the wake of this pandemic? Well, I think we have, I consider it an opportunity to really revive the discussion on climate change because climate change is right where we left it really in February. The challenge hasn't gone away. And now we really need to think how we are going to tackle that. Uh, I'm also worried that after this crisis, climate won't be a top priority for everybody. Uh, I think it's, it's never been more important than climate continues to be a top priority for governments around the world because and we might use some of the lessons learned from this pandemic to help us in that, uh, in that fight against the climate crisis. But Iceland is, of course, we're a small country. Uh, what we sensed during this pandemic here in Iceland was that there was a great solidarity. Uh, and maybe because we are an army, you know, we don't have a military in Iceland. We are really focused on that we are a very liberal society. So actually you could say that the responsibility was placed on the shoulders of each and every one of us. And the slogan was that we are all really part of this public security. We all need to be a part of it if it's supposed to work. And I think that has actually worked. We have been learning as we go by and we began by testing and then we actually increased the testing a lot. We did that by actually entering into a collaboration. So the public health services were doing a lot of tests, but we also had uh, a private company in health sciences doing a lot of tests. The tests were free for all people living here. So we have actually done well over 50,000 tests here in Iceland. We, there are only 350,000 people living here, between 350 and 360. And then we, when people were actually infected, everybody they had met were put into quarantine. We used the old fashioned style of just using the telephone, calling everybody, say you met an infected person, you have to go into quarantine. And then actually we designed a tracing app, which we have encouraged pay people to use. So it's easier to trace really where they have been. I think the size of Iceland has been a benefit for us. For example, when you're trying to trace who you have met uh, after you get infection or are suspected of having an infection. In Iceland, we know really, you know, we all know each other. So <laughs> the tracing becomes relatively much easier in a smaller society. One of the decisions, I think the right decisions that we made was that we have had a daily press conference where the chief epidemiologist, the medical director of Iceland, and uh, a representative uh, from, the, from the public security services of the police, they have been there uh, answering questions, all sorts of questions from the media, trying to give as much information as possible to the public. And I think that has been a challenge to keep everybody informed because a lot of information is uh, traveling through the internet. And this was really 
one of the good decisions that we made. Let the uh, let the scientists really be there, be them, and they were really ready to do this, which was amazing to answer all the questions and and be in a daily contact with the public. 